asked, and I wrote her a letter, and I said, uh, is God telling you anything about us? And I replied, if there was to be an us, you'd be the headship in the relationship, and I believe he'd speak to you first. Now, which was really funny about that is I had so many confirmations from God, but I wasn't going to help by relaying those to Dennis. I knew he heard from God, and I wanted God to tell him himself. And when I replied with that email, my youngest son said to me, Mom, you're really not helping this guy, are you? And I said, you know what? If this is God, he doesn't need my help. I'm a willing participant, but I don't need to help him. Just before that, uh, while she was out in BC and mm. uh, with her family, two of her other sons had some interesting questions. Uh, after several years of being a widow, they surfaced with a question. One said, Mom, do you think you'd ever marry again? And one said, have you ever considered remarrying? And when the first one asked me, I was thrown off guard. And they say, the Bible says what's in the heart comes out of the mouth. And instantly my response was, number one, he'd have to love the Lord at least as much as I do. And that's a lot. I really love Jesus. Number two, he'd have to be the spiritual head of my household. Because I'm not dragging a man over my shoulder by a rope spiritually. Number three, he'd have to be self-sufficient. I'm not supporting a man. Number four, he'd have to be fun and like to laugh and be my best friend before we got serious. And number five, he can't be too hard to look at. When I responded to Dennis's email that sent, I, where I sensed that he was um, having feelings for me and this was going to develop, I wrote all that in that email. On the 20th of May, the anniversary of my first husband's death, the Lord told me to write him and tell him all the intimate details, things I had never shared with anyone. Uh, about my life and I did that and I included what the boys had said and what I had said to them but I left the last one off I didn't really think that was as important he responded by saying it doesn't look like I'd be excluded from your list of requirements that was pretty positive but then I also said uh, what the Lord had shown me about finding a maid and I told her well the Lord had given me Ezekiel 44 and uh, and I, I said I read, I thought I'd better go and read Ezekiel 44. From, from what I understand, I don't fit this order. I wasn't obviously a virgin. I had three children and I wasn't married to, a, I wasn't the widow of a priest. So I wrote back and I said, it certainly looks like I'd be excluded from yours. And then I wrote her back and I said, but the Lord has shown me that he receives ministry from you, which makes you, in fact, a spiritual son of Zadok or in the same category as those priests so that allowed me to consider her as a potential partner and so he he affirmed and confirmed and uh, uh, from that point on we started really communicating quite extensively <laughs> and you know it's really quite amazing because God took two very different backgrounds. Dennis was raised in a godly home, had a godly wife. I was raised in a very good home, but went into a very um, dysfunctional marriage situation and family situation. But God had a plan. And when I asked the Lord after we were engaged, what's next, Lord? Is my ministry per se, as you, the, the way you've used me finished now and is my ministry now my husband? Because if that was the case and it's God's will, I would have been fine with that. But the Lord said, oh no, what I have for you as a couple is far beyond your pleasure and your convenience. He said, I have a plan for you for my purposes that's above and beyond anything you can imagine. So don't even ask. We've been uh, married now almost three years in about three weeks from now. And uh, the Lord has done a good work, and uh, we're growing together and uh, enjoying what He has for us. We have six wonderful sons between us, 11 grandchildren, and we're truly blessed of the Lord, but only because we trusted Him. Amen.